Hi guys, welcome back to the Theory Lab and today we're going to be throwing some chords at you and asking you to actually do them and work them out before I do. Okay, so the idea here is I'm literally going to say a chord. So for example, let's work out a C major. Okay, and for now we're just going to do two different uh, chords, so either a C or a G or, or whatever, uh, but the various major, minor and diminished versions of those, okay? Now you can test yourself as much as you want after this. When you, when you realise how we're doing it, you'll be able to go away and test yourself easily, okay? But what I want you to do, I'm going to call out the chord and then the process is involved and then I want you to pause the video, try it for yourself and then we'll go through it. Not only do I want you to actually write it all out, I want you to create the chord on the guitar as well. Okay, so let's just start, okay? And let's kick off with the chord of A minor, okay? So, the two processes, okay? Just before you pause me, the two processes. One, write out the A major scale. Remember, it's all based on A major scale. Then create the chord, so work out the theory. So which, which ones do you take to create the minor chord? And then the next process is trying to do that on the guitar. Okay, so pause me now and give that a go. Now, I'm obviously just going to assume that you've done all that and I'm just going to crack on. So, let's go through this. So, we're looking at A minor, aren't we? So, let's start with that A major scale. Okay, so here we go. We're going to start with the A. Okay, this is the one. I always like to do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so I've got them written out so I know where I'm going with the major scale. And then of course it's tone, okay? So A to B, tone, B to C sharp, okay, hopefully you've got that. Then semitone, that's to D. Then a tone to E, tone to F sharp, a tone to G sharp, and then a semitone back to A. Lovely, we have our major scale, that's the first part. That gives us A, C, normal, C natural, I guess you'd call it, because it's not C sharp because we flattened it. So C sharp flattened is C, so we've got A, C and E, okay? So that's your first step. Your A minor chord in theory terms is A, C and E. Now, were you then able to put that on the guitar, okay? So let's just go through this. It doesn't have to be in a position I'm in, okay? I'm just gonna pick an example and I just want you to follow it, okay? But as long as in your chord on the guitar, there's an A, a C, and an E, it will be an A minor chord, okay? So I'm just gonna start here. So I'm gonna say, look, here's an A, okay? So that's the D string, seventh fret is A, okay? So when I'm looking for C, I've got a whole bunch of options, but I'm gonna try and, um, Try this one. So there's a C here, and I'm going to do the octave above that. Okay? So there's a C. Okay? But for this sake, I think, oh, well, actually, because my A was here and the C is here, that I can definitely do that. Okay? So I've got an A and a C. Okay? That's giving me my root and my flat third. Now, what about the E? E is the next one. Okay? So where can we find an E? Well, we've got obviously the low E string. We can do an octave from that, so two up, two across. An octave above that is two down, three across, and that note there is an E. So I've got my A, okay? I've got my C, and I've got my E. Just flatten there. And that, my friends, is an A minor chord, okay? So, you might have played yours anywhere, but the thing I wanted you guys to have avoid, and certainly if you did it last time, don't do it next time, is just a shape you already know. So don't go, oh, I know an A minor chord. There it is. We're trying to work the brain here a little bit more. So we're trying to find the chord and construct a chord that you don't already know how to play based on the theory, okay? So let's do one other, okay? So like I said, you can test yourself on this as much as you want, okay? But we've just done an A minor chord. So this time, okay, we're gonna do a major chord. And we're gonna do, let's think of something maybe a little bit trickier, let's see. Let's do an F major chord, okay? And this is gonna throw up a little bit of difficulty and it's something that's important to come across. So, we're gonna come back to the chalkboard, okay? And we're gonna just put a line under that, that is the A. Now we're gonna do F down here, okay? So F, if we're looking for an F major chord, when you're looking for any chord, we create the F major scale. Okay, so let's just put our numbers back in. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
eight, or one again. And of course, F, and we might as well do it, F over here, okay? So, let's work out the scale first, shall we? Remember, you needed to have tried this before me, so make sure you're pausing now if you haven't already. Now, a tone up from F is a G. Okay, nice and easy so far. A tone up from G is an A. So tone, tone, semitone, okay? So what's a semitone up from A? Well, the answer is A sharp, of course. However, and this is the cool thing that I want to talk about, okay? Well, it might not be cool, but it's certainly something you need to learn. Um, we can't put A sharp in here. And the reason is because we need to have B written here. We need that structure of, of every single letter possible written down. So we can't put A, A sharp. It's just, it's just a theory thing. Don't worry too much about it. Because in theory, A sharp is absolutely bang on. And if you just said that and played it on the guitar, no problems at all. But if you wrote it out, so if you're actually studying for an exam or, or anything to do with a music exam, then you cannot write A sharp here. Instead, you're gonna write B flat, okay? And this is where understanding the flat and sharp thing really is important, okay? Because we had to write B here, because A was here, we needed a B next to it. Just like we're gonna need a C, a D, and an E of some kind across there as well, okay? So, a sharp and B flat, we know from our very first lesson, is exactly the same note. So we had to write B flat here, okay? Let's move on. Now we're gonna go up a tone. So we're going to C, so B flat, B, and then C. Then another tone, D, another tone is E, and then a semitone perfectly takes us back to the F, okay? So we've got an F major scale. So it threw up a little bit of a new piece of knowledge, but it's good, it's good that we've come across that and understand that. So now, we were looking for an F major chord, weren't we? So now we've got to remember, okay, what's my construction of a major chord? Well, it's quite simply the root, the third, and the fifth. Nothing is edited. There's no flats like there was previously. If it was a diminished, we'd have a flat five and a flat third, but it's just major, so it's root, third, fifth, okay? So let's move on over to our guitar and try and find this particular chord, okay? Again, I'm not just gonna go, oh yeah, okay, I'll pretend to find it and go F major bar chord. I wanna find it in a really kind of constructive way here. So, let's look for the F, shall we? So I'm gonna play the F, and I'm gonna try and really push myself here. So I'm gonna play the F here, okay? Now, for me, this F is way up on the, uh, <laughs> where am I? 10th fret of the G string, okay? And of course I could have started down on this F, but I looked at that one, eighth fret of the A string, and did the octave above it. Okay, I always use that octave technique. I think it's a really cool way of finding the notes quickly. Now, we're gonna be looking at the major third now, okay? So we're looking very much for an A, okay? So can we find an A? So we've got many, many options to use, and for me, if I started here, we've got A, octave above the A, and then another octave above the A there. Okay, remembering using that same octave technique. So, pretty good start, right? Now that gives us an F and an A, so the root and the third, okay? And then to find the fifth, which is a C, well, this is actually starting to look like a chord I've done before. There's a C on the eighth fret of the E string, which you can find just by knowing the E string, really. So that gives me that. Now, that's fine, but we did that one before. So let's just try and rearrange this instead. So I want to instead, I'm gonna remove that A from there, okay? I'm gonna keep the F, and I'm gonna put the C here, okay? So there's a C on the B string, 13th fret. And I know that because I could have gone C, octave, octave. So I've got F and C. What I've got is root fifth, okay? Now I still need to put my A in there somewhere to create the full chord, okay? So actually, instead of doing, you know, the F, the A here, I'm gonna find it somewhere else totally separate. I'm gonna find it on the E, on the A string, on the 12th fret, so there. So those three together give us an, a, uh, an F major chord. And the only thing to bear in mind here is that we've got the A in the root rather than the F, okay? So it just gives us something called an inverted major chord. Now we'll get back to that in the long term, we'll get back to that later on. But essentially, I put the three notes on the guitar. I put F, A, and C 
on the guitar. I'm not bothered about what order they're in at the moment. In fact, to be honest, if it's a different order, so if it's not F, A and C, if it's A, C and F, you're probably going to get a more interesting sounding chord as well. So it's so cool. Applying this theory will open up the kind of guitar to new chord shapes. Maybe you'll find something that no one has ever found before and it just defines your sound on the guitar or something along those lines anyway. But either way, that's our little test done. Okay, so I want you to go away and test yourself. We didn't do a diminished chord here, but you should be able to find one of them. Try a different scale, try and find major, minor, diminish, and all the while be sure to go through this process. So you write it out, you find the chord, and then you put it on the guitar in as creative a way as possible.